this, the title of your books is one of the best titles I've ever seen. Terror of Demons Re- Reclaiming Traditional Catholic Masculinity. Mm-hmm. Okay, why did you pick that title specifically? Such a cool title. The cover is beautiful. Why did you pick that title? Sure. Well, it's the coolest name ever. But um, yeah, it is. If, if I was a <laughs> professional wrestler, I think I'd want that to be my name. But um, <laughs> uh, I was actually I wrote the book without a title. I had like a working title. It was nothing. It was just sort of you know masculinity book or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I didn't actually think of jo- St. Joseph at the front of my mind when I wrote it. But then I went on a retreat just after I'd finished writing it. And there was a beautiful image of St. Joseph and the Holy Family. A very, uh, like an original painting. He was very virile, very young, very strong. It was a really good image. And um, I just prayed t- to God about what to do with the painting. And and I'm such an idiot, guys. My whole life, I never realized my middle name is Joseph. Um, <laughs> it's my no-no's name. God rest his soul. He was Giuseppe. So it's Joseph in English. Mm. Um I just thought it was that, and I didn't realize, oh, that's like my baptismal name, and I'm born on the Vigil of St. Joseph uh, in, at 5 p.m. on March 18th, and I always assumed that I was born on the hangover day of St. Patty's Day, but I actually <laughs> realized that I'm actually born, born on the vigil of an actual amazing feast in the church, a triumphant yeah. feast, and it was just kind of my whole life, I said, oh, this has always been just gearing towards this moment, and I realized St. Joseph was there the whole time, so I just had to dedicate the book to him, and then I wrote the appendix series of articles at the Fatima Center when I was working there, um, just uh, devotional things. So it just sort of all came together. Awesome. Ruben? Yeah, I j- just, uh, just had some questions about, uh, sure. about the book, uh, Kennedy. Um, so why do you think it's important to focus on reclaiming traditional Catholic masculinity as opposed to, to virtue in general? Sure. Um, well, I would, well, for two things. One, the word tradition— it's not a book for just quote unquote traditional Catholics. I am, I, I, I would call myself that, but it's about the traditional piety and practices we've always had. That's why I say traditional. Tradition means to pass something on for safekeeping. So it's the stuff that we've been, we've received and we've forgotten. That's why I want to recapture it. Um, as far as virtue, I don't think you can separate virtue from masculinity because the word virtue actually comes from the word for vir, which is literally the word for man. Okay, so in Latin, vir, vir means man. Uh, this is where we get the word strength, literally is manliness. Virtu is strength. And um, so when you say a man, if someone's being virtuous, it actually technically means they're being manly. Um, so this is why in old English literature, you'll see things like, you know, so-and-so acted manfully in that thing. And you could be talking about a child, you'd be talking about a woman. It's not saying that they were male, but it's saying that what they did was virtuous, i.e. manly. And this has been understood um, up until the advent of political correctness. Um, so, you know, the archetype of what masculinity is, is virtue and the archetype of virtue is masculinity. So you can't separate them so that they have to be together. Very well. Very good. Well said. Yeah. Kennedy, you know, it reminds me in the old Testament, there's a scene where King David is dying in, uh, I forget, I think it's in the book of Samuel mm-hmm. and, and Solomon, his son is next to him as his father's dying. And David says to Solomon, father to son, he says, uh, he says, be a man. Mm. I mean, th- those are his last words as he's dying to Solomon, his son. He says, be a man. A- and, and again, it, it's, it's exactly what you just said right now. I mean, the last words of a dying king to a son who's going to take over his throne, he doesn't say, you know, go out and, uh, you know, b- break the push-up record or go out and run a marathon or go, go out and, uh, you know, uh, be the b- best golfer in Israel. He says, be a man. In other words, in other words live a life of virtue. That's, that's what I hear him saying now that you break down that term the way you broke it down. But here's another question. Some people say that your book is probably a bit hardcore. Uh, what do you say to that allegation? It is hardcore. They're right. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so they're true. It's, it's right. I mean, it's you know, guilty, guilty, right? Yeah, I'm very happy about that. People will say it's a little bit too intense. You're the right. It's very intense. Um, listen, it's this is not a time to play around with kid gloves. I mean, the average man is addicted to pornography. The average man, uh, and I'm, I'm including myself as an average man. I was raised without all these things or these virtues that I should have known. And I've learned them since I've taken the faith seriously and, and I've through a lot of hard work and a lot of failure. And so it's not a time to just play around. I mean, look, the reason we had lockdowns is because of we had unvirtuous men. The reason why a guy like Anthony Fauci can tell you what to do is because everybody's soft. You don't, you don't listen to these petty little stupid tyrants if you've got a backbone. We don't have a backbone as a civilization. There are men that do, but they're beaten down, uh, they're castigated, they're told they're toxic and so forth, and it's all rubbish. The left, the modernists, the heretics, whatever you want to call them, 
they don't they do things very intense they'll cancel you they'll dox you yeah. they'll they'll get you qu fired from your job so uh, there's no more you know i i love there's a lot of really good catholic uh speakers and stuff and they really try to be sort of you know approachable and these sorts of things and there's a place for that not everyone is going to react to every approach but we've had 50 years of the new springtime and we've had 50 years of dialogue and friendship and it's not working at this point it's time for a boot camp it's time for us to get into shape and you're never going to have a successful boot camp unless the drill instructor is screaming his face off at you and and you might want to punch him to be honest but you'll probably do more push-ups and you'll probably work harder because he's motivating you if so i've had people read my book and they've said to me, you know, I was really angry at you for the first half of the book. And I realized I was angry at my own sins and you were just calling them out. That's not me. This is just me writing things that saints have said. And I just put it in a resource for people.